This small cottage on a street corner is a wonderful subject for a quick daily 10 minute drawing exercise. And I think it's particularly a good subject. Even though we've done a lot of cottages in this series up till now, because we don't get the same clear reference points for our drawing. The sides of the cottage are obscured by these two rather large shrubs that we have in front. And so we can't just block out or even see as much of the front facade as we wouldn't normally want to and therefore judge the shapes more easily, particularly be able to see some nice rectangular or squarish shapes. What we have mostly is the gap between the two bushes. And that's challenging because it's going to force us to observe more carefully, but also to perhaps map out, block out, establish where our marks go in a different way. And anything that forces us to take a different strategy in our drawing because we need to, is going to be helpful in developing, in advancing our drawing skills. So this is an excellent subject to do, but I was surprised at how much it slowed me down at the start. Not being able to just jump into the normal way, I would do this in other ways, quite regular subject. So the cottage sits up on a raised platform and eye level is fairly high if we look at that stone surround on the left hand side we can see that both those lines slope upwards but the upper one slopes slightly less and if we look at the fence above and look at the top of the fence it also slopes very slightly upwards but not nearly as much it's getting close to being level. So eye level is going to be just above that fence line. And that's because I'm standing across the street and the ground level continues to slope downwards. So I'm relatively low down looking across at this house. It's important that we see that before we start because otherwise we may be tempted to put that top fence line angled up too high and then it's not going to work in well with the top of the veranda and the roof lines sloping down the other way. So I put in these fence posts, though I don't intend to actually show them the way I've drawn them. I intend to show them by negative space, by showing the darkness behind whatever's making up that darkness, whether it's a shrub or hatching. But I've just positioned those lines there to guide my add in the darkness when I get round to doing it. But for now, I'm just working out this space between the two the two buildings, the two shrubs. Keeping the angles ever so slightly increasing in angle as they move upwards away from eye level. So you're watching this at real time, of course. At 10 minutes, I will switch it to double time for the last couple of minutes. So it took me, I think, 14 minutes to do in real time. So now you can see what I mean by establishing the negative space. In fact, that section of the building between the column that I've drawn and the shrub on the right, I drew that by visualizing the negative space that was in the reference and positioning my lines to create that space, if that makes sense. So being able to draw by seeing the gaps between objects rather than seeing the object is a really important strategy of observation and drawing to have at the forefront of our mind. We should be switching between positive and negative spacing constantly, whichever one gives us the better information for what we're trying to do, for the effect we're trying to create at that point. And now some hatching for the veranda behind. I 
I found it a bit a bit frustrating to suddenly be in a part of the building the drawing that I haven't really established yet and I realized that I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to have had to work out what was happening there in the left in the shadows of the left hand side and that I really need to move on in what I'm doing so I rough out something of this shrub though because it's obviously a significant part of our scene it balances the other one nicely and try to at least define this front edge now we have this stone retaining wall small retaining wall I don't draw that till the end where I need to draw the effect of the stonework. I don't want to get bogged down drawing every stone. As well as taking a lot of time, it actually will end up looking less realistic, ironically, rather than more. And so there is a corner that pokes out here. And so I line the corner up with the lines I've already drawn. I need to make sure that it's a seamless continuation behind the bush, that there's nothing that we notice about it it's the sort of detail if we get it right it's not noticeable if we get it wrong then it's noticeable for all the wrong reasons and again i'm looking at angles and spaces that are created some foreshortened lines for the fence that goes away from us down the side street at a steeper angle than the one at the front a rather bodgy attempt at doing the lace work there's so little of it now that's that's left that can be seen as white that I I think I basically give up on it at that point hoping it won't be so noticeable and I do intend to draw the street sign so I need to do that before I can do any more but I decide, looking at the time and starting to get a bit anxious about that, that I really need to get the roof on before I do too much else. So I establish the gutter in line because I've already started that. And just trying to work out the best way to do it. So I align the apex of the right hand side of that small ridge that we have at the top and I do the same for the left hand and again I make sure that the angle increases slightly to the angle of the gutters below and then I find the point where that front gable roof section comes out so there's something that happens in the house that we can't see behind that left hand bush but we can see from the roof line that it comes out to some degree. Maybe it's just a bay window or something rather than a whole room. But we want to reflect that in the roof line. And now we have the chimney. So again, I align the chimneys up on the roof with what's happening below their positioning in the reference. And I do the same for the other chimney as well and I certainly pay attention to the perspective angle that's created between the two chimneys because that angle should be a diagonal line that's again slightly higher than the angle of the ridge of the roof it's probably not quite steep enough I probably should have done that first chimney just a couple of millimeters higher so now we go around the corner and now I think getting pretty close to putting that street sign in and then we switch to double time. If you're finding this helpful, please hit the like button. That helps me as well. And in fact, if you're finding this series helpful, then please do me a favor and share some of these videos with friends that you have who draw and let them know that there's a playlist where there's a whole lot more of these to make daily drawing practice easy and fun and very effective 
in improving our drawing. I would greatly appreciate that. I don't know how many I'm going to do. This is number 54, I think. But um, if you're finding them helpful and you are doing them, please let me know in the comments because that will encourage me to keep going with them. But I'm sure they've been helpful even for my drawing improvement, particularly at b developing a confident gestural style of drawing. Just trying to work out the last bits, a bit of value uh, for the veranda. And then we've mostly just got the small amount we're going to do for the foreground. I actually put, if you like, the effect of a window space in there because uh, there were some shutters, but I felt that they were just going to get totally lost if I tried to draw them. We have the curving gutter in, a manhole cover or something on the street, some grass there, a little bit more foliage and some values to just complete the front fence line, show the shadows behind the fence posts. And then we just have that final step, I think, which is the marks to indicate the effect of that flagging, that, that stonework along the front. So here I go. So I do a little bit with a little more detail, usually in the most visually prominent position, the spot where the eye gets naturally drawn to. And then as we move further away into more of the peripheral scene, the lines become less distinct and just less of them. And the brain can just join the dots, can continue the drawing that I haven't actually done. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this interesting and helpful and I hope you give it a go. Of course, you'll find this reference on my channel community page. So why not go there and see if this daily practice doesn't improve your drawing. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.